our way to Vallejo, California, the Yay area. Going to see my boy Chuck Motto, aka Chuck's Flavor Train. Y'all probably know him. Uh, flavor packing, never lacking. Juicy like Lucy. It's official, like a ref with the whistle. Yeah, I'm excited to go check out his backyard, show the world his backyard, hear his story. Chuck's a real close friend of mine. He, he's influenced a lot in what I do. We actually hang out on a personal level, you know, my family, uh, his family, our kids are around the same age. Uh, it's gonna be fun, man, I'm super excited. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, today we get to cook and I, got, I get to see him slap that meat as hard as possible in person and have some laughs, man. It's always good hanging with Chuck, dude. He's a real cool dude. Let's go. about to watch the second episode of the Backyard Barbecue Invite from Embers TV. This series follows me around the different barbecue content creators and pit masters into their backyards to give you an exclusive tour of their setups. Now this is the last episode that we're going to put on YouTube. If you want to see more episodes of this series, you're going to have to subscribe to Embers TV. You can use my code MONEY to get 30% off your first year subscription. Without further ado, here's episode 2. Heard that. What up? <laughs> What's going on, bro? Shit. How was the drive? It was cool, man. Yeah. Good Appreciate you coming you. out. Good to see you. Hell yeah. Damn, look at that chain, Ooh, boy. Ooh, call me Mr. C. I'm <laughs> Mr. T's little brother, you know. Hell yeah. Show you the finest greenery this side. Nice, yeah, man. We ain't talking about that medicinal stuff. What you got growing over here? It's springtime, baby. We got everything. Got some tomatoes going on, big ones, little ones, couple onions. You got any herbs growing in here? Like <laughs> any medicine herbs? Not the kind of herbs I really no. like, but we got some stuff going on. Got some micro herbs back here, basil, thyme, oregano, the big greens, artichokes, asparagus, got tomatoes, oh, I two see the types. tomatoes under here, Yes, man. sir. There nice. might be a ripe one there to try. Let me see. Do I see a red one? Yes, see, sir. Red one right Look at that. Lucky day. First tomato of the season. Let's try that bad boy out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Be better with some beef. Be better with a steak, you know? Nice, man. This I haven't been back here for a while, dude. It's been a minute. Got some upgrades going on. Got the gazebo put in. Nice. A couple more grills added. Girlfriends, as I like to call them. So life's good. Life's real good. Nice. Which ones are your favorites, dude, out of all these? Favorites? Got to go with the Webers. Started off on the Smoky Mountain. It's still here. Old Faithful right there. Love my kettle. If I want to be easy, have a lazy day, I'm going to go with the Z Grill. And then these right here, those are the money makers, the pit barrels. That's pit the barrels, lineup. Yeah. Pits are always That's legit. one thing I'm missing in my backyard is a pit barrel. Dude. We'll change that. Yeah. Amber and Noah, I'll reach out to them. That's the owners. They actually just Hell moved yeah. out here. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're in the area. So. I'm with it. Absolutely. We'll be firing up the kettle today, though, baby. What's under this bad boy right here? This right here is my local cooker griddle flat top. So, yeah, I got a flat top here, flat top there. As of nice. today, this one's basically a shelf and storage since this is where we're getting down at. So. Tight, tight. I love it, man. Yes, sir. Hope you're hungry. Hell yeah, I'm hungry. What you cooking? Cooking up a rack of lamb, what? Jack, and you know Hell that shit's yeah. gonna smack. Hell yeah. Yeah, a little rack of lamb, nice little herb sauce. Dude, I see you make them all the time, dude. I can't wait to cool, try cool. yours. Dude. I got the chimichurri king of California out here, so I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm not calling it a chimmy. I'm gonna say an herb sauce. If it's good, you can call it whatever you want. Hell so. yeah. Tell me how you're setting this up, the, the charcoal and everything. Absolutely. Classic backyard barbecue style. Got the kettle over here, basically a giant bowl with the grate at the bottom. We're setting it up for two zone cooking or indirect cooking, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So all of our briquettes are banked to one side. We'll light maybe half of these coals, maybe a third of them. Let that get hot. We'll place our meat opposite that so it's cooking indirectly. Let it smoke. Got nice. some beautiful red wine soaked wine barrel in there that I actually got from a local winery as well. So they pulled them out about two weeks ago. I got them two days nice. after they were pulled. So. You know, I don't think I've ever used like wine barrels as 
like smoke. So I'm Honestly, excited about that, man. Absolutely, you should be. And I will say this, it really imparts a good flavor. Sometimes people say, I don't taste cherry, I don't taste oak. You will taste the wine. You'll oh, nice. smell it too, so real nice. Should be fun. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Let's get to it, baby. <laughs> so today we're going to use my Luft lighter, baby. This is an electric fire starter. Basically blows hot air. I don't really like to use gasoline. You can. The whole rumor of you can't cook with gasoline. Gas or sorry, propane. You know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was like, Damn. I'm not a fan of uh, people starting. You know, with uh, charcoal. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, I can't think. Uh, Pro propane. Propane. Yeah. Propane. propane. Lighter fluid. Anything like that does work if you burn it off. But this is nice, quick, and easy, and you can control where the fire goes. So nice. should take about 20 seconds to get real hot. Should start throwing sparks after that, and then from there it's on. Oh. So does this double as a blow dryer? You know, if you use, blow, <laughs> use this as a blow dryer, it's like opening the Ark of the Covenant. It's gonna melt your face off. So you can see the little spot right there, that yeah, white yeah. spot, it's lit. And then from there, I'm actually gonna turn it around, try to throw that spark a little bit. The sun's about to start poking now. Look at that, right on cue as we're lighting up. Woo. <laughs> the sky's good. parted and the big belly <laughs> God said, let there be barbecue. I'm gonna light up a little bit more, maybe get like eight of these hot, and then we'll go chill. There's that sun. Yes, sir. Yes. Not to be sweating like Betty Spaghetti out in this heat. <laughs> this is supposed to be hot today? No, Vallejo's oh. never hot, bro. It's the Bay Area, that's why I live here. <laughs> Should we get cracking on that rack? Hell yeah, let's, let's go. get to it, baby. You cook a lot of lamb? I do sometimes, not as much as you. Right here is La Piece de Resistance, if that's what they say. Got a beautiful rack of lamb. Some people say it's my jam. We'll find out today. <laughs> More importantly, we got my truffle rub right here. This thing of ours, part two. Flavor packing and never lacking. Can I try a little bit of that? Oh, yes, sir. You're not sober, are you? Because uh, this will get you high on flavor alone. Just want to be sure. <laughs> mm. What are you picking up? Get some a chili, a little yeah, lemon. Yeah. I, I definitely, definitely taste, taste the citrus. A lot of spice. A lot of heat. It's yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, people, I think the name <clears throat> truffle rub throws people off. There's a lot of heat yeah, in here. Yeah. It's got a little bit of truffles, but lamb is one of those things that holds up well to strong flavors, bold <coughs> flavors. Oh, God. Now, heat will get you, baby. <laughs> I told you. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit this thing smothered and covered. And it's funny. I'll tell you, people say, oh, you're the lamb king. You cook a lot of lamb. What's funny is my wife and I, at the time, were just dating, lived in an apartment. There was a grocery outlet next door. Lamb's getting more popular here in America, California, but it's not super popular like it is everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Grocery outlet would always have racks of lamb on sale for 10 bucks. I'm like, this is a good cut of meat. It's a good ass cut of meat, $10. I started buying lamb, lamb shanks. That's how it started. So I started cooking lamb out of necessity and just this is what I could afford, not trying to be fancy. And yeah. now it's become a signature dish of mine. So I'm excited to share it with you today. So juice, man. real quick, this is a beautiful French rack of lamb. You can see French means the bone have been trimmed up properly like that. There is a heavy fat cap that comes on top. Sometimes this one's been removed, which you can leave on if you're grilling. The way we're gonna, like a hot and fast grill, we're gonna be smoking and searing. I like to take it off just because otherwise it won't render down properly. So to ensure the proper medium rare internal temperature, you gotta take this rack and you know what I'm about <laughs> to do. Baby powder, give it a smack. There now it's time to season it. That That's right, there right there is going to ensure a proper cook. Trust me. You've been saying, oh, Chuck, I overcook my steaks. I undercook my steaks. Do you smack it? Oh, no, you don't. That's a pro tip. This will help. Trust me. <laughs> Got some olive oil here coming in a nice squeeze bottle. A new company I just found. I know it looks kind of cheap and tacky. Game changer. The perfect amount every time. A little binder. We don't need too much. There is a lot of fat on the lamb. Make sure the rack smothered and covered. We want to properly season. God damn, you are getting drenched in that. <laughs> That's right, dude. That's right. I'm about to throw a tone on the grill as well today. <laughs> I'm gonna season up both sides, pat it in for even distribution. Don't rub it. I know it doesn't make sense because it's called the rub. It's one of the first things I learned barbecuing grilling. Pat it, don't rub it. So we're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes. What that's gonna do, as you know, let that salt kind of break down, absorb into the meat. We don't wanna go too long, so it's gonna draw the moisture out. But after about five minutes, this thing should be ready to get on the grill. We're gonna get smoking. Yeah. We ain't joking, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and prep our kettle here. The coals are where we want them. We don't wanna leave this open too long, or as you know, the more oxygen this fire gets, the hotter it's gonna get. And next thing you know, it's not gonna be smoked. We're just gonna grill this thing. Yep. 
I'm gonna put the lid on. And this is something that I didn't know when I first started smoking in the backyard. When you're banking your charcoal to one side, I would not wanna put it down with the vents on this side. Why? If my meat is sitting over here and the vents are here, all that smoke, all that heat's gonna go right up out the vent. So everybody at home that doesn't know, this really helped me a lot. Go ahead and get your vents on the opposite side of where your coals are. What that's gonna do is drag that heat and smoke across your grill, let your meat actually absorb that stuff and make sure the air's flowing circularly. That's so, how you do it, yeah. Yes, sir. We'll let that come to temp. Go ahead and chill for a minute, get that rack of lamb on. A little nice. brew for What's you, good sir. That's our homie Ed's beer, 187 Barbecue, baby. That's his light Hell pills yeah. there. I don't think I've tried Go this one Go ahead and yet. crack that. You know the rules. Oh. Pop pinky that pinky. Let's Take go. a drink, it, baby. Oh, that's Ooh, good. Yeah, now I'm barbecuing. Breakfast of champions right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's how I maintain my figure, <laughs> baby. It's beach season. Ooh, let's see. I'm really smoking a low. <laughs> Got this beautiful rack of lamb. You can see all the flavors in that beautiful rub on there. We're going to go ahead. Here. Ooh, teamwork makes the dream work. Whoa. We're going to lay this fat side down because the heat's on the bottom. And then we want the meat that's the most tender away from the heat source. So we'll go ahead and lay it down like so. We're going to let that smoke away. And that is the hardest part of barbecue, waiting. That's on, now we just gotta wait. Luckily, we gotta elevate and celebrate the flavors of this rack of lamb with some sauce fit for a boss. Got a boss level homie over here, Tone Capone, gonna make a chimichurri inspired sauce. And I'm saying inspired because if I mess up this chimichurri, I'm gonna hear a bunch of shit from all the people that love this guy so much, so. It's like a balancing act <clears throat> over here, all these fancy ingredients. I'm already committing a cardinal sin for those of you watching at home. I know what Tone's thinking. A food processor, my guy over here is all about that hand chopped chimichurri, so that's why I'm saying inspired sauce, not an actual chimichurri. I mean, what year is this from though, man? Like the 1940s? <laughs> Dude, I got this for my wedding, which oddly enough has been almost 10 years now. So yeah, it is fairly old. It's funny, I'm thinking this is new, but it's not new. It's like for old people with the big ass buttons. <laughs> okay, this guy's talking all kinds of shit. I don't have good eyes and there's only a couple buttons you need on this thing. Anyway, let's talk about flavors. So. One of the things I think, especially in California, you can attest to this, you love chimichurri and all those sauces. We like shit fresh out here, right? Yeah. Whether that's a little bit of garnish at the end, herbs, whatever that is. Lamb is a meat that really fits in that profile because lamb really takes well to something that's fresh, bright, acidic to counteract kind of that lamby, fatty flavor, which I love, but some people don't. So if they don't, this is, might be a good way to serve it. I'm gonna keep this simple and sweet. I don't really like parsley. So for my chimichurri inspired sauce, I go with a half bunch of parsley. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. I go with two full bunches, cilantro, okay? So the cilantro is my main green herb in there. Lamb loves mint. If you wanna go heavier on the mint, you can. We just wanna kiss it with a little bit of mint. Ooh, shit smells fresh, smell. baby. Yes, smell. sir. Just a little bit. It's potent stuff, goes a long way. Gots to have the garlic. I got like garlic eight, must. 10 cloves. Gotta have that. Throw some garlic up in there. Did I miss one? Oh, thank you, sir. This guy's always got my back. That's why we're homies, you know? <laughs> and then some onion, a little bit of red onion. You can throw green onion, shallot works as well. Whatever you have and like, whatever onion you want, make it your own, adjust this. You'll notice I'm not measuring shit. I don't measure nothing. I rely yeah. on the flavors. Taste, adjust, Same taste, here, adjust, man. exactly. So you can use regular chili flakes if you'd like. I have Aleppo pepper, shout out to my guy, Bobby Flay, everybody out there doing big things. I had never found out about this until recently, this past January. It's a real nice heat, um, well what is, balanced. What is it comp compared to? <sighs> oh man, I would almost compare it to like a standard red chili flake, but it has slightly more of a paprika smoke flavor to it, I would say, if that makes sense. That's just my palate. I'm also a dumbass, so who knows? And that's all you put in? So yeah, so we got our herbs, red <clears throat> pepper flake. I don't like my stuff too spicy. I got the king of heat over here. We'll see some on the side. He can incorporate <laughs> it in afterwards. That's all you put in? Yes, son, I got things to do today. All right, so after that, we're gonna throw in our vinegar. I like to start with what I think is hopefully like a half cup, maybe three quarters of a cup. Could always add more. You can't add less, okay? And we're gonna go ahead, season this up. A little flaky salt, a couple pinches. Nice. Gots to have that. I say a couple. Salt is life, baby. You ever go out to eat and think, man, this is good, it's missing something. It's salt, if it's not salt, it's butter. You're welcome, now you know. A little bit of pepper going in here as well. Man, I love these products, but this shit grinds pepper slow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
and you can't adjust it. Dude, I got the hex clad ones. Now, oh, so I gotta step my shit good, up. Dude. If only I had a homie that could plug me with that stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and real quick, I didn't highlight. I'm using a champagne vinegar. It's I can't even explain it. It just feels like champagne in your mouth. It's lighter. It's got a better flavor in my I was opinion. I looking at that too. That has a like, weird. Yeah, it. yeah, it's real good. It's nice and light, um, bright, bubbly. We'll go ahead and bring this stuff together. Oh, this smells like champagne. All right. <coughs> I'm pulse and bring this together. Once everything's broken down a little bit, you can start adding in your olive oil. Some people like to add the olive oil afterwards and stir by hand. You can do that. But one thing that I believe, and I kind of learned this from making ramen, especially with pork stock, things with a lot of fat, when you whip it, olive oil, any fat, it emulsifies. What we're gonna do is get a bit of a creamier texture and hopefully all these flavors are gonna be transported throughout this more because the olive oil is gonna act as that carrying vessel. So do you mind hitting that pulse button for me and just kind of pulse sure. it on and off? Go ahead. Hold it for a second. There it is, keep going. And you can see literally the color change and it gets a little creamy. Yeah. Stop! <laughs> it's like conducting an orchestra, baby. And now it's a matter of tasting and adjusting. If it doesn't taste good right away, which it might not, that's okay. We have the base sit down, salt, pepper can be added. I like that. I'm gonna throw in some more pepper, you're right. A little bit of the Aleppo. a little bit more olive oil. One more pinch of salt and we're there. I'm adding in salt because it needs salt, pepper to balance out the heat and olive oil. Why? To cut the acid of the vinegar. Let's see up there, my bad, bro. There we go. Get that one more time. Good. Thank you. Let me know. And one thing about barbecue, it's always a tag team effort. If the cameras are rolling, I'd say the same shit. If this tastes like shit, tell me. If it needs something, please tell me. <laughs> I like it. Tangy as fuck, right? Real tangy. Get the heat on the back end? Yeah. Cool. With the smoke, like that tang should cut through the fat. The heat on the back end should play nice with all the flavors. <clears throat> as of now, we're hanging out just waiting on our rack of lamb. So we'll clean up, me in place, maintain a clean kitchen, all that shit. Plus, once these cameras are off, I'm gonna get real drunk. And I don't wanna clean up later, so we'll do it now. So I haven't been keeping track of time. How do you know when it's ready? I don't. No, um, <laughs> honestly, you let the meat talk to you, as, as dirty as that sounds. I have a thermometer out here, I've been poking it, but I really don't rely on what the temperature says. It's a feel thing, especially when cooking a rack of lamb. I want it to be firm, but still tender, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm looking for a perfect balance of texture. The smoke flavor is going to be there. I just want to make sure that it's just about done because we are going to sear it after this. And hopefully, this is that magical moment. Ooh. You can see it's got a gorgeous bark on there, beautiful crust. Man, that looks good. So all we're going to do at this point, and yeah, I can see, yeah, not too soft. That's the exact texture I'm looking for. Get my hot glove on here. The other thing you want to check for on the rack of lamb, that fat cap that goes over that whole top side, you want that to be rendered down a little bit. And as you can see here, as you know, whenever fat splits, whether yeah. it's a pork butt, anything like that, it's starting to render. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and throw it directly over the coals and sear it. Yes. I like to start with the fat side down because the fat is going to drip onto the coals and cause it to flame up, as you can see get our fire going and then at this point it's a matter of literally playing hot potato you can do this with tongs if you want but i like to use the glove to have full control constantly moving it if we were in a fancy restaurant somewhere in napa valley perhaps you might see these with the uh, bones wrapped up in tin foil or heavy duty like butcher paper what that's going to do is prevent those from getting dark and burned this is backyard barbecue ain't nothing yeah. fancy i'm eating meat on a stick that's all i'm looking for so I'm not really worried about that, but again, you can wrap the bones, that'll protect it. Yeah, that's good. It does smell good. You can see that fat cooks up crazy quick. So that's why it was maybe down 10 seconds and I flipped it. You don't want that fat to burn because it's over the whole entire fat cap. If that fat cap burns, the whole entire lamb chop is ruined. So, and at this point, I really am just relying on feel. What's also nice about a rack of lamb, similar to a tri-tip or any cut, you can get multiple textures, or excuse me, multiple internal temperatures on this. The end should be cooked a little more. Why? Because they're on the end. The middle is going to be cooked a little less. Why? Because it's in the middle. Similar to cooking a ribeye or anything. So, 
couple more seconds here, and I think we're about done. I'm of the belief, one, meat should still be nice, juicy, and pink on the middle. Two, and like I said, same thing with adding vinegar, or adding things. You can always add more, you can't add less. We could always cook this more if it's not where we want it. Once it's overdone, we can't do it less. And that right there, whoo, hot dog bopper. Drip dropping on them. Sexy and sizzling, baby. And even with the gloves, holy shit, that's hot. <laughs> Let's get this on the cutting board. We're gonna let this rest. All them juices can hang out and get to be real friendly. Then we'll slice it open, hit it with that sauce, and hopefully we got a tasty treat. Hell yeah, juicy like Lucy. That's what we're hoping to see. Ooh, that feels nice. Go ahead and set this here. Look at that fat, still sizzling. Oh, that's pretty good, if I can say so myself. It does look good. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little foil. We wanna let this rest like 10 minutes, and then we're good to go. Looks good. Feels good. I've got to say a prayer every time, you know? Don't be nervous. I feel Don't like I'm, I do. I am nervous, dude. Every time I cook, it's like I'm fucking catering right now, dude. Every time I cut into a piece of meat, backyard, competition, catering, I literally say a prayer to the barbecue gods and hope it tastes good and comes out proper. It's weird. You feel like you do something a hundred times, you know what you're doing, but every time the nerves hit you. Before we serve up that lamb, we get our sauce poured up into this bowl here. Thank you, sir. Texture on that. Yes. And One salt and pepper on that bad boy. And this is the showstopper and the panty dropper. Good. I'm very excited for this right here. <clears throat> now, in my head and in my heart, this thing feels perfect to me, but it doesn't matter what I think. It's all about the interior. Go down through the bone. Oh, sorry, hitting that bone at the end there. Nice and pink, Ooh, juicy, there we go. That is perfect, bro. Right up. Ooh, juicy. There it is. There it is. Let's get an interior shot of that. Beautifully rendered fat, nice, pink, and juicy. Ooh, running down my knife. She wet, wet. So, we'll get this sliced up here. Beautiful little lollipops, as you can see. And my lord, look at the interior on that. I did that. Woo -hoo! We like to say juicy like Lucy. Call me Beefy Ricardo, baby. That's what we do. So, I'm going to go ahead and lay this out here. As I said earlier, I like to go ahead and get my chimichurri inspired sauce into the food processor. You can use a blender as white. Well. Go ahead and dip it over the top if you want like that. But more importantly, I serve it in a bowl because it's a lollipop, baby. Go ahead and get you on tone. Woo -hoo -hoo! Look at that! Give me, give me some of that ch inspired chimney. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. Cheers, my good friend. Cheers, I hope you enjoy. Mm. No, that's funny. <laughs> or as we say in this part of the yay, it's official. <laughs> like a ref, ref with, with a whistle, whistle. baby. Mm. And the fat. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Well, killed it. Thank you, thank you. And just because I'm a glutton for salt, and I hate my doctor, just to make it pop, and take it over the top. So tell me, like, what made you start barbecuing and stuff like that? Honestly, I feel like I've been grooming my whole life. You know how it is. Yeah. One member of the family grills, whatever. That was my dad. Really smoking meat. Heavy duty barbecue started about seven years ago, that Weber Smoky Mountain over there. Mm -hmm. My brother got me that for Christmas. I smoked, oddly enough, a rack of lamb was my first smoke. I said, damn, this yes. shit tastes good. I had fun doing it. My wife loved it. And it was off to the races from there, man. Barbecue, being outside, having fun, cooking food, just relaxing, set my mind at ease. And then from there, like I said, you start posting on social media. You meet people like yourselves. You start talking about recipes. Hey, you did this, you did that. And next thing you know, you're lying about, oh, I cater and doing birthday parties. You have no experience catering. Yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, <laughs> we're at where today. And I never thought that the journey would take me this far. It was never the plan. Mm -hmm. I've always said my goal is to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. That. And hopefully I can provide for my family doing that. And, so, and it's just so. so just what made you start social media? You know, <laughs> I have a good buddy. Uh, I've known him my whole life, my boy Matt. His wife, they came over for dinner and I made a, made a lamb neck pasta. She said, this is amazing. Is that Tom's car? 
<laughs> she said, uh, so my buddy's wife came over for dinner. I made a lamb neck pasta. She said, this is awesome. You need to share this on a blog or something. And again, at the time, young, ignorant me, I'm like, blog, that's for like for women, like college <laughs> chicks. Like, like that's not, I didn't just didn't think like a blog, but I thought, well, Instagram, I have one. I never post on it. So let me go ahead and do that. I started posting. I met guys like Big John's Barbecue, Cariba a bunch of people, and next thing you know, it's like you're in this cult. Like, it really is like a family. Yeah, it is. And, um, but yeah, I started posting, you learn more. You want to, oh, I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could do that. And next thing you know, you've got this little community of people, and really, that's what happened. And as far as the videos, I never started filming videos thinking, I want to go viral. I cook for my family every night, yeah. whether out here in the barbecue or inside in my kitchen right there. I film what I make every day, and that's it. I think that's why a lot of people respect you, man. You're just real about your stuff. You're, in your videos, we can tell that you're real. You know what I mean? Ain't real obnoxious. <laughs> he cut it off. There's a camera cut. At the end of that reel, he said real obnoxious. No, for real. Like, there's no fakeness in what you do. You know, when you pose, when you talk about things. Like, you're just, you're Chuck. And that's it. And that's all people are going to see is who, who you really are. And I think that's why people gravitate towards you, man. Like, and to be honest, man, like, I was following you before I even started my barbecue page. You know what I mean? And then... I think you just popped up on like uh, my For You page or something like that. And it, it, first thing I seen was you slapping me, dude. And Thank then, you. Yeah, man. Like, and then, you know, what, like a year or two later now, we're hanging out. Like, you know what I mean? It's, the barbecue community is so dope, man. I agree. And I feel the same way. And seeing you, I feel like there's a lot of uh, bland kind of vanilla, vanilla cookie cutter pages out there. And there's nothing wrong with that, but... It takes a lot to catch my eye, but immediately you got a good look and you got skills, but you stood out right away. So I recognized you and then I'm like, oh shit, this guy's in the Bay Area too, yeah. so it had to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. But to hear you say that, it's funny because I've heard that a lot lately. Actually, at your last get together at your spot, I remember uh, Brianna Married to Barbecue was saying that, oh, you know, you're an OG of the game. And I'm like, what? And then to hear you say that, it's like, I've been doing it for seven years. I tell, this is real. I'll look in the camera lens. To all the kids out there at home, if you're chasing a dream, if you're something you want to do, just fucking do it. That's all I can say. Because this shit right here is a lot better than sitting at the office like I used to be. And I never thought this would have happened. And this all started from listening to my friend's wife just trying to share a little bit of myself online. So follow your passion is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, it truly is a blessing. And the last thing I'll say is how you say, oh, you're yourself. The one thing I'll say, and I really kind of was having this internal conversation recently is, I never really knew who I was. People say, were you always loud? Were you always Chuck? I was always me, but I wasn't always comfortable being me. Food just let me share myself with the world. And that, I think, is the coolest thing about this whole barbecue game is this has been my way to share myself. So. I like that, dude, because I feel like that's how I am too, man. Like, oh, I was, I grew up a shy person and all that, and like, now I'm in front of cameras, dude. And like, now it's starting to be more natural. Yeah, know? right. Like, like, you know, I, I would never want to sit in front of a classroom to say anything or speak in front of people or anything like that, dude, let alone take pictures of myself. No, no. Or videos of myself. And now I'm doing it for a living. Exactly. And, and it's, it's like, a trip. And it's a trip because it, like, it just came natural to me, man. Like, you but know, you love to do this, right? It, it's something that I love to do, exactly. And that's the key, and then, I think. Yeah, I think that's the key to it, man. Well, depending when this comes out right now, you guys are going to find out that I either did or did not win on Food Network. Beyond that, I got a bunch of catering. That's the main thing is I would say keep the train rolling. Whatever comes, comes. I don't ever want to try to put myself into a, a box or a position where there's so much pressure that I feel like I have to do something. I do what I want when the opportunity arises. Regardless of what happens, you will see me around the California area, the whole bay, cooking, having fun with the homies, with my family. That's what it's about, man. Keep the priorities in check, you know. Any secret things on the horizon that you know people might need to look out for or anything like that? Oh, man. You, know, you, you, know, can you can spill the beans to me, man. We're homies. I know we're spilling. See, that's what he's trying to get me. We're on camera. Everybody else watching, some of y'all are homies. Some of y'all, I don't know, and I can't get in trouble. My black ass is just getting to a spot where I feel secure, and I don't want to go backwards. So as of right now, nah. Just go ahead, follow the social media, wherever it is. If not, follow this guy. I'll be around. You know what it is. I don't like plugging my shit. You can yeah. find me, so. Cool. Thank you for having me again, uh, showing me your backyard, showing the world your backyard. I appreciate it. It was good to hear your story, as always. And man, good seeing you. My pleasure, dude. GFTI, the man. the pleasure is absolutely mine. I appreciate yeah. you sliding through. All good. Not the last time, the yeah, beginning. Trust sure. me. TFTI, man. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate <laughs> you. Yes, sir. Get the fuck out. I'm done. <laughs> Cut the cameras. Get out. All y'all got to go. I'm eating all this shit for myself. Let me take this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
If you want to see more, please subscribe to Embers TV, www.embers.tv. Use my code MONEY, get 30% off your first year subscription.